Bon a look how my garden of roses. Let's spend some time talking about the world economy and what some economists are calling the everything bubble. Now, in my previous video today, toward the end, I began to describe just the smallest indicators of economic bubbles popping. The home price index in San Francisco and Canada, and the stock market bubble, which has centered on five stocks which accounted for 30% of market capitalization. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, colloquially known as FANG, F-A-A-N-G. However, this is merely the tip of the iceberg, which the world economies will be crashing into within the next two years. Mark my words. I've spoken on and off about the economic bubble surrounding the internet giants, a speculative market which, with no limit to the production and sales of assets and services, tests the very limits of a market system which was entirely designed around dependency on limited commodities and limited human resources. If you held stocks in any of the five American companies within the so-called Seven Sisters of Tech, your portfolio would have grown by 50% in the last year. However, toward the end of the year, that growth began to stagnate, and now those gains are starting to erode. With the 667-point drop of the Dow Jones Industrial Average on Friday, it was these tech giants, Apple and Facebook in particular, who saw the greatest losses. And while this drop only represents just under 3% of the stock market's value, it does not bode well in the face of a steady, slow loss being seen across all the strongest within the market, which have been on a slow decline for more than two months and accelerated last week. The housing market around the world appears to be experiencing a repeat of the problems seen in 2007, and in some cases at a scale far exceeding what we saw back then. While the peak of the 2000 housing bubble saw the housing price index, a weighted index of average price changes in repeated sales of single-family households, rise from 228 in 2000 to 378 in 2007, we now see much more extreme changes in places like Canada, which has risen from an index of 36.3 in 2010 to 413.9 in 2016, as well as Stockholm, which has risen from 731 in 2010 to 1050 in 2016. Smaller but no less concerning are the indexes from homes in Sydney, Australia, which have risen from 98.9 to 167 in that time frame, and San Francisco, California, which has risen from 139 to 234. But these are regulations in place, excuse me, there are regulations in place to protect both consumers and the market from the dangers of subprime mortgages and the like for homes which is what kept these numbers from going faster than they already have. However, there are no restrictions on subprime lending for automobiles, a debt market which has doubled in size since 2010, going from under 650 billion in outstanding auto loans to 1.4 trillion, of which 280 billion in outstanding auto loans are based on subprime lending agreements. With 24% of all automobile debt resting on subprime lending and 10% of all automobile debt currently in default, this market is in the same position housing was in in 2006. A terrifying prospect for anyone who's paying attention, unless of course they can afford to purchase credit default swaps on companies like Tesla, Toyota, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. But before you think all is lost and everything is at risk, Take note that the problems are in very specific areas. It's not the entirety of the stock market that is bubbling. It is, however, strongly evidence that companies like Google, Amazon, and Tesla, as well as the banks supporting them, are bubbling and fit to burst at that. Corporate debt climbed 54% between 2010 and 2017, to a total of $5.9 trillion outstanding while corporate debt yields have barely exceeded treasury yields in that same period. All of this comes at a time when President Trump has appointed a new chairman to the Federal Reserve, a man, a man named Jerome Powell. Remember that name, because it's going to be coming up a lot more in the coming months. 
It is expected for Jerome Powell to raise interest rates in the United States and in turn begin selling off the $4 trillion in assets the U.S. took during the quantitative easing period from 2010 to 2017. And this would be a response to the very low unemployment rates and general improvement of the economy. But it's extremely unlikely that these assets will end up entirely back in the hands of Americans, with China predicted to begin collecting on the debt it holds from the United States. What does all this mean, though? Simply put, while the actions taken under the Obama administration to help the world recover from the global financial crisis, spurred on by the housing bubble popping in 2007, seem to have worked in the short term. The world economy is extremely fragile and balanced atop a de atop debt held in the hands of a small collection of corporations. These companies, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, Tesla, and the banks which underwrite and support them, hold more than 30% of the economic growth of the world in their hands. And just like anyone who purchased a car from a financing company in the last seven years, they're increasingly having trouble paying back the outstanding debt that they hold. It's not just one asset that we're looking at, like we were with the housing crash. Between the cryptocurrency bubble, housing debt, automotive debt, corporate debt, national debt, advertising debt, and the concerns over any one of these crashing, we would in turn create a chain reaction unlike anything the world has ever seen before. We all sit atop a house of cards and a hurricane is coming. It's going to take a lot more than rising interest rates. It's going to take courage in the face of this seemingly idyllic market held in the hands of companies who which would undoubtedly continue to operate even if the market were to crash. To use the language of the late 2000s, these companies are too important to fail in the eyes of the markets. However, these companies absolutely need to see antitrust cases brought against them. New companies need to be allowed to flourish and these giants need to be divided up by section. Their value must go down so a broader competitive market can serve to withstand the impact of any one or all of the bubble, bubbling asset markets crashing. Federal Reserve debt holdings must be kept, not sold off to balance the quantitative easing ha uh, impact that was had on the government, until the market can strengthen in all sectors, rather than in the hands of six companies and four banks. And more than anything else, everyone needs to stop spending, especially more than what they have. People need to stop spending to the limits of their credit cards, even if it seems impossible at this point. People need to live within their means. It's time to get bearish. We have no other choice. The world economy is at stake. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.